Thanks everyone for joining for our uh, student accommodations and IEP compliance webinar. We're going to first ground ourselves in the types of tools available to students and then move into how you turn those on on EdSight or whether they should be set up at the device level um, or given as a non-embedded tool. So to ground us in the types of tools that students should have access to on assessments, I wanted to share a few screenshots from a sample of different states and how they provide universal tools to students. So in this first example, we have information put out by Ohio, the Ohio Department of Education, and they talk through universal tools. So these are tools that are available to students on every test, regardless of their IEP or any designated supports. So we're talking about highlighters, line readers, marking for review, so I can go back to a question and, and see it later. If it maybe question three was a tricky one, I'm gonna flag it and then come back to it at the end. There's masking tools, notepads, the ability to strike through or eliminate answer choices as I'm going through. There's a test clock so I can see how much time I've used. And then there's writing tools like the toolbar and the Zoom capabilities. Now, some universal tools are dependent on the subject of the assessment. So, for example, if you are in Ohio, they actually make text-to-speech a universal tool for math, science, and social studies. Uh, and it includes that text-to-speech tracking, which has the highlighting of the words as they are read. Whereas if it's an ELA assessment, that is not turned on as a universal tool and becomes a designated tool or something where it needs the student needs to explicitly have that turned on based on a particular educational need. Uh, again, we're just gonna go through a, a couple of these examples. Um, another state that I pulled up, actually not a state, but Smarter Balance provides assessments to many states and so this is just a couple screenshots from smarter balance very similar to what we just looked at for ohio you know you've got your line reader you've got your highlighter and um, this one mentions an english dictionary so there's different tools that are just always going to be turned on and we recommend looking at the information that has been shared by your state to make sure you know what tools all of your students will have to make sure all students are comfortable using those tools and then which tools do i need to explicitly turn on for groups of students for individual kids um, another example from massachusetts just to give us a range of states yeah uh, this this talks through um you know highlighter zoom tools those seem to be pretty universal across all of our states um, and then here they've got mentioned the alternative background and font color so those color contrasts or changing up the colors that students see and then the last state that i was going to use as an example is texas and so their documentation that they put out they include um, you know whether it's something that at your site you designate as a support come end of year testing or if it's something that you have to get approval from TEA and so this was an example they have oral or signed administration so that's similar to text-to-speech as mentioned by a lot of other states or extra time so now that we're grounded in you know where where does EdSight get a lot of our information about accommodations and what tools to provide? We really look at the states and we use these documents that they put out about their end of year state assessments to drive our tools for students and make it helps us make sure that we're providing an equitable assessment experience for all kids. And so, you know, just to show what a few of these universal tools look like on EdSight, 
This is an example of the notepad. Again, that's a universal tool across, across the states. This is a highlighter tool. And even though the highlighter tool is going to look different if you're in Massachusetts than if you're in California, um, the tool itself is universal. The fact that I will have a highlighter is the same. Um, but if I'm in Massachusetts, I might have additional colors for my highlighting. The line reader, again, another, another option that's a universal tool. On EdSight, we're able to embed that tool at the top as a universal tool. And then the marking for review, depending on which state you're in and which premium viewer you're using, that mark for review might look slightly differently, but it's, again, going to be available. And then the Zoom, up in the top right corner is typically where you'll see that Zoom button for all students to be able to enlarge the page view for themselves. As well as if I turn on a timer, I'm going to see that in the top right corner. Um, and then you can turn on what's called extended time to increase that or turn off the timer completely. Um, Text-to-speech. So this is where I want to actually pause and, and talk a little bit about our different viewers. So on EdSight, there is the standard EdSight viewer. So anyone who signs up for a free teacher account has the EdSight viewer, with the exception of we do these common assessment initiatives every year where teachers can go look up, you know, Washington common assessments on EdSight, and they can give a released uh, state assessment in that premium state viewer. Well, for people that are using the premium school and district version, we have those state viewers turned on for everything that you do on EdSight. And with that comes text-to-speech. So text-to-speech looks different depending on which state you are in and therefore which state viewer you have on EdSight. So some teams, the speak text appears as a dropdown where I have to highlight text and have it speak that selection, or I just click speak text and it reads everything. For other states, you have play buttons on the right side of the page where I press play. Um, I think it's in Missouri, you have play buttons at the bottom of the page. So depending on which state you are in, this might present differently, but again, the tool is the same. Um, good. Let's see, we've got a question. Uh, oh yeah, so we've got questions about common assessments and how to teachers turn off and on those accommodations for specific students that is a great question and that's exactly where we're going to be going and um, now that we're grounding ourselves and okay these tools are possible in EdSight I have an idea of what I want to be universal and what I want to be for a specific group um, a couple other tools I wanted to highlight just before we move into how do I turn these on for everybody or for certain subgroups. Um, we've got our dictionary. So this is the Merriam-Webster dictionary plugin that a lot of state test providers are actually using. And so um, that becomes a button at the top of the page, depending on your state viewer. Yeah, and these are just some crazy screenshots that we won't spend a lot of time on, but just to show you that it presents differently depending on your state. Yeah, so this one's like a New York one. This one would be more like Michigan. And so there are different presentations of these tools, but at the end of the day, what matters is that the right tool is available for the right student. So now we're gonna talk about you know, embedded versus non-embedded, ed site versus device level, and we're going to talk about settings for the question level, assessment level, and student group level. So if I want to turn on a setting at the question level, let's say that I want to add a word bank for a um, 
a group of students to be able to, you know, use and reference while they are doing some writing. That's something I would actually have to build into the question. If I wanted to add content clarifiers or have that glossary component, whether it's as a footnote um, or, you know, information at the bottom of the reading, whether it's a reference uh, sheet in a second tab, or one of the new settings that's going to be released in October, which is uh, that content clarifier where I can set a definition for a particular word in a reading that then when a student, I think it's hovers or clicks some kind of action over that word or set of words, that that definition or that um, additional context appears that has to be set at the question level because you're building that in to your answer choices or to your passage. Um, it's not something that is going to be applied to the whole assignment. Protractors and rulers are the same. So if I have a question where, where students have to measure something, uh, that ruler or protractor might not be necessary for questions nine through 14, but I need them on question 15. And so I turn that on at the question level. And the same with alternate text. If I am using text to speech, it's good practice to add alternate text to your images. And that is going to be done at the question level. And so here's a screenshot of our question editor. You can see here I've got in my top screenshot settings, the tab settings selected, and you can see protractor and ruler are options there. I've also got another screenshot down below here where you can see my yeah, just general editor with my settings gear opened. And this is where if I wanted to add images, I can click on the pencil. And when I'm adding images, I can add that alternate text. So this is a screenshot of my image insert pop-up that comes up when I am adding images. And you'll see here I can add an alternate text that will be read with that text to speech. So picture of a cupcake with, I'm sure it says a pink wrapper. You can also change the alternate text on math text. So if you want to change the way that the text to speech automated text-to-speech reads a particular fraction equation, you can go in to your assignment editor and change it to be, you know, um, three minus two or, or three subtract two. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head the exact defaults for some of those mathematical actions, but if you wanted to change something, you can do that in your alternate text. Yeah, um, and then a couple other question level settings before we move into assignment level and student group level. I wanted to mention the record audio function. So I actually recommend using the essay type that includes audio recorder if you have uh, the premium version and have those recording options turned on. And the audio recorder, it just appears in the essay toolbar with a microphone. So if a student has an accommodation where they are supposed to uh, speak their answer instead of typing it out, you can go ahead and make that microphone available and the teacher can listen back to it later. Yeah, the other option for audio recording is to have a standalone question that has a big record audio option. Typically, I see this used more for alignment to the actual English language assessments like OELPA or LPAC or WIDA Access, um, giving students access to uh, a similar recording option that's not so much an accommodation or a tool, but it's a standalone question type yeah, that I wanted to make sure I highlighted. Now let's talk about assessment level and student or group level, because the assumption is when you are building your content or if you found something in the library that was already built, the content designer 
already made the decisions about, you know, should I have content clarifiers over these particular phrases? Should I have protractors or rulers turned on? So that's all part of the content building process. This next portion, when we talk about assessment level and student or group level settings, that's talking about how do I take this assessment that was already built and administer it in the most equitable way possible. So the two questions I would have us think about it are, one, should this be available to everyone or is this a designated support? So that, that gets to what we talked about at the beginning. Do, does the state that you're in consider this universal or designated? And then the second question I would think about is, should this be left to the teacher to set up or should this be automated within your, your district, within the admin account? So this gets to the question we got from one of our attendees about how, how do we turn it on for particular students? Um, and you know, is it the teacher that sets that or is it an administrator? So at the assessment level, this would be an example of you know, maybe it's a math assessment and everyone gets a calculator, or maybe it's an assessment that is math, science, or social studies in the state of Ohio, and everyone gets text to speech. And maybe this is a particular science assessment and everyone gets the periodic table. So, and these would be assessment level settings that are not, you know, going to be particular to a group of students um, and they're not necessarily something that the teacher has on all the time. So uh, by default though, EdSight has text-to-speech turned on, um, it, you know, just to make sure we're always erring on the side of most accessible. Uh, so if you are turning on text to speech for math science and social studies by default that is turned on and rather the the push is then onto your ela teachers to turn off text to speech in the assessment level settings and when we talk about assessment level settings those settings can be applied to the whole assessment or a specific section in particular i think of calculators or reference sheets so if I, well, I'll go back one, um, did I put this, there we go. Um, so the, the setting option for an assessment, and on EdSight we use the word assignment and assessment interchangeably, so just wanted to recognize that. If I'm in my assignment editor or my assessment editor, you know, I've got my, my test name in the top, left corner, I've got questions at the bottom, and I have a settings gear in the top right corner. So I can click on that settings gear and I can click open all settings because just clicking on the settings gear gives me a quick preview of what settings have been turned on for this assessment. But if I click open all settings, it brings me to my pop-up, my assignment settings pop-up. And for accommodations, you'll spend most of your time in that top assignment setting on the left that says student tools. So this is where I can set my calculator. There are different types of calculators. There's a basic calculator, a scientific calculator, a graphing calculator, a graphing calculator specifically designed to mirror the graphing calculator on state tests. I think that's called like AIR calculator or something like that. But you've got calculator options. And you've got your text to speech options where you can say text to speech only on uh, the questions and directions. Or, you know, give text to speech everywhere except for the passage. So you've got those settings, again, in the assignment settings gear. So I click on that gear, I click on open all settings, and that's where I can turn on my universal tools, turn on and turn off. 
here's a quick GIF that just runs through what, what that can look like. So, you know, I checkbox what I want to be turned on uh, or turned off. And then when I'm done, I save my changes and that's now all updated on my assignment. So I click on my settings gear, I open all settings and I can turn on whatever tools need to be turned on. Within that assignment editor, I am also able to make section breaks and assign settings just to a particular section of an assessment. So oftentimes we see this with calculators and not like and then sections that should not have a calculator. So if you click on it almost looks like two rectangles on top of each other or the thick equal sign. If I click on that, it's going to add a section break right underneath that question. So you'll see here I've added two section breaks. I've added one under question one and one under questions two and three. And then you'll see that settings gear that appeared up at the top of the assignment editor now appears under my section. So when I click on that settings gear, I also get that settings pop up where I can turn on calculators. I can set a timer for a particular section. I can um, you know, do whatever settings that I want for that part of the assessment. Um, now, the other thing I wanted to talk about, so this isn't actually an assessment level setting or a question level setting, but I, I did want to address it because it comes up a lot. A lot of people will ask about, you know, changing the colors and the contrast for assessments. We actually recommend making those accommodations or changes at the browser or device level. And so every every browser or device has guides on how to use their accessibility features. Um, and so if you want to turn on high contrast or you know change the mode, for example, I use my device in dark mode and, and it changes uh, the background colors and text colors on a lot of pages. Why we recommend this is because it allows you to provide a student a more consistent accommodation across all of their online experiences, not just on EdSite, and it's gonna be consistent for them. So when it comes to some of those uh, color contrasts or visual accommodations, definitely recommend going at that from the device or browser level. Okay, now student group or individual students, how do I turn on extended time or text-to-speech or a default Zoom for a group of seven students to just apply everywhere? Because if we're talking IEP compliance, we want to make sure that every time this student takes an assessment, they have the tools that they need. So within EdSite Schools, which is the premium school and district version, you are able to create what we call student groups. And so you could have a one student group, or you could have a group with 100 students in it. Yeah. So whether you, know, you are in reality only turning this tool on for one student or it's 50 students, it's still going to be set up as a student group setting. So from an admin account, and this admin can be a principal who has access to their campus. It could be a grade level chair who has been given admin access to their grade level rosters and students. It could be a special education uh, director or teacher at a school or district level. But whoever has an admin account with privileges to access the list of students, they are able to create a student group and then go to that student group, go to group settings and turn on a particular setting. So in this example, we're turning on magnified text. So from my admin account, if I go to my rosters menu and I click on district students, I'm able to see all of the students that I have access to. So again, if I'm a grade level chair, 
and I only have access to seventh grade students at Gryffindor, then I'll see the list of seventh grade students. I can check box the seven that should have text to speech always. I put them into a group. I go to the group level settings and I turn on that text to speech. Uh, one thing to note is that if you have a lot of groups and a lot of students in those groups, you are able to upload the list of students to a particular group. Or if we're talking about a very large scale rollout, we can automate these groups. So if you have, you know, a lot of teams might have a particular uh, system that they use for tracking accommodations. What we would ultimately need is an SFTP sync or some kind of a information uh, drop from that system to EdSite. So we could update the student group on a regular basis. So you would just need to, in your system, whether it's frontline, whether it's you know your student information system, wherever you're storing that, you would want to look at your designated supports in that system. So for example, if I'm in Texas, it likely says oral slash signed administration, and that would equal text to speech on EdSite. So I would get a list of the 3,000 students that should get that oral signed administration, and I would have a nightly sync or just do a, an upload from my administrator account into a text to speech student group. So once the group level setting is set up, you don't have to go in here and, and reset text to speech every time. It gets provided to students just by getting uh, added to that group. So if I add seven students to the magnified text group today, and I turn on magnified text in the group level settings, and tomorrow I add three more kids to that group, those three kids automatically have it. If I remove two kids from the group, those two kids will lose that access as a, as a tool that overrides. The nice thing about student group level settings is they override any assignment level settings. So even if a teacher turns off text to speech, even if a teacher turns on a timer, if I have extended time or if I have text to speech always, my student group level setting will override anything set on that assignment or section level.